Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Hey, we've got a fun little review today. Uh, if you'll notice here, we've got the Razer UHD binoculars from Vortex. And uh, I've always wanted to try out a set of these. And so went ahead and bit the bullet and we've got some in. These happen to be in 1250. And I wanna kind of go over some of the things that I found about these that I, I really like. A couple of things that are, I guess, cons, if you wanna say. Uh, just things you have to live with if you want uh, this type of quality. But uh, let's start out. I've got two sets of binoculars in front of me. This happens to be the Razer UHD that I just referred to. And these are a set of my Cabela's Euros that I bought about 10 years ago. And these actually happen to be the standard Euros made by Miopta. However, these are not the Cabela's Euro HD model. And so anyway, I wanted to compare these and kind of go over a few things. Um, it's not a long video, we did just some comparison, but what I did was I took this set of binoculars with this, went to my buddy's house. He has the Swarovski binoculars just like this. These are 1042s. He has the exact same model Swarovski. The, actually the form factor is just about the same as these. Very compact, very easy, maneuverable. As you can see, it says right here, they're made in by Miopta and Czechoslovakia. And so they're really a great binocular and one I've used for a long time. Uh, these happen to be just a little more affordable than this Warski at the time and, uh, and still yet today. However, uh, I think they're fairly comparable. I, I believe, you know, overall, I believe the more premium binocular is gonna do just a little bit better uh, the Swarovski is just a smidge better. Now, is it, you know, enough difference in the cost? We're not going to get into that, really. I mean, we could go about that all day and talk about it. I prefer these, and I've been using them for years. They're a little bit heavy, good quality glass. They're high-density glass and, uh, you know, a high fluoride content in the glass. So they're extremely good, very clear, used them for years, been happy with them for years. But now let's compare them to these uh, UHDs. Now the first thing you're gonna know right away is the size. You can clearly tell, even though these are, these are 12 power, the 10 powers are the same size as these. So if you get the 1050s, they're gonna be the same size. And there's a big difference here between why it's the same size. These do, um, as far as over the standard Vortex, Razor, the standard HD version, not the UHD, which is what I'm holding, but the standard HD version is closer to this size. And there's a difference there because this one is made like the standard HD version. And we'll kind of go over that just a little bit here. But, uh, but because of this size, you also have to give up some weight too. Uh, these are about, uh, if I remember right, they're about five ounces heavier. And so you've got to be able to say, well, you know, is this enough glass, enough quality, that I'm willing to pay the difference here in cost and weight and size? You know, because they're not gonna fit your standard Vortex pack that everybody uses. I mean, these things are gonna stick out of the pack, you know, quite a ways here and probably not close up. So they do come with their own pack, which is very nice. I mean, it's a real high quality pack. You can put a rangefinder attachment on the front, things like that good padded pack, kind of a semi-rigid case, but um, very nice. But if you're purchasing a new pack other than this one, then you're gonna have to get something more along the size of, you know, a medium or a large because your standard just kind of compact uh, size is not gonna fit. So uh, just keep that in mind. But so if you're doing a lot of, uh, you know, goat hunting and things like that, these may not be what you want if, when you're trying to cut ounces, you know, uh, may not be the thing for you, but I would encourage you first, before you make that decision, go ahead and look through them. Go ahead and try to make a comparison. And I know that's gonna be tough. Try to find somebody that has them because you know how it is. If you go into Bass Pro, Cabela's, anywhere else you're gonna look at them and you're looking across the store, you're looking a hundred yards or whatnot, you're not gonna tell the difference. I mean, come on. It's, uh, they're all gonna be real close, you know? And um, even some of the things I did tonight made it real tough to tell the difference between some of them. But 
we'll get into that in a moment. But what I'm saying is get them where you can really take a look at them. Try to find someone in your local area that has some you can really take a look at and do a comparison because I think you're going to do yourself an injustice if you just overlook it on weight alone, you know, because there is some optical differences and we're going to go over those to, today here. So size, physical size, weight, things to consider uh, when you're purchasing. Um, you know, these are really good for bow hunting, really good for, you know, all around. I use them for about everything. These are for, you know, out west and doing different things when you're, you're trying to see long distance and get that, that clarity that you need to see to uh, really make a good determination. So why are these different, you might ask? I mean, you know, we know these are good quality. We know for our skis are good quality. Uh, I'm hoping I'm saying it right. And, um, but overall, there is a size difference and I'm gonna explain that to you. It happens to do with the prism that is in here. This particular unit here has what's called a Schmidt and Pecton prism system. And this one has what's called an Abe Koenig prism system. And the prism system, uh, the more times that you have to change the, dir the direction of the, the image and the light, it can cause more distortion, more loss of light, things like that. So uh, the more times you change it, uh, the less clarity you're gonna get from a particular set of glass, okay? So you have to start out with the high dispersion glass, just like both of these have. And for the most part, whenever you're talking about these two systems here, I've actually drawn it up here and I'll show it to you. Uh, but these are the two prism systems and why they're different. So if you'll notice here on top, we've got the Schmidt and Pecton. And what happens is the light comes in and bounces around a number of times before it goes out to your exit pupil. And so, the, like I said, it's kind of like you know, turning water, you know, whenever you're, uh, you've got more bends in a water line, you're putting more pressure, you're losing, uh, you're losing flow, basically. And so that's what's happening here. Here is the Abe Koenig system, very simple, comes in, makes a couple of bends here and goes back out to the exit pupil. That's why it's longer. But because it's longer, this takes up more space. This is a more compact system and makes almost a square. This makes a rectangle. Therefore, that's why this is much taller and it has to have more room for that. However, just like we're saying, the Abe Koenig system here is going to allow more light to your eye. And so I definitely saw that tonight. And so what I did, like I, like I first stated, was we went over to a buddy's house. He had the uh, Servarskis and they're similar to this. Keep in mind, these and his Servarskis are about 10 years old, so they're not the latest top of the line like these are. So let's just keep that in mind. I didn't have the latest greatest to compare to, but what I'm saying is I could definitely tell a difference between mine and his Servarskis. The, the difference was fairly minimal. You know, I'm not gonna say that, uh, that, you know, there was some huge difference there because for the price point, for what I paid for these versus what he paid, uh, there was a different, there was a big difference there. So I'm still happy with where I'm at with these and all of that. But then whenever you look through these, now naturally when you go up in magnification, and these are 1250s, when you go up in magnification, oftentimes you lose, um, you lose lighting because you're trying to get that in through the same power. I mean, that, that higher power, uh, trying to get all that light through there. And so you're going to lose some light clarity in the low light. And that's what we looked at, low light tonight, right at dusk, and we were comparing it. And granted, we were only looking about four to 500 yards. So it wasn't a real long range, and but there was a difference. Even at that range, you could tell that even though these are 1250s, these were brighter than the other two uh, sets of glass. And so I was happy about that. I mean, that really uh they really look good um overall between the the clarity of the two sets of let's say the vortex to the Swarovski um that was about the same you know the clarity of these to both of those a little bit less just a little bit and 
Um, and that's just my personal opinion. I mean, if you had a way to measure that, maybe they're all the same. Don't know. But um, I'm trying to give them all a fair shake here. And But I'm saying that these compare. But yet, I feel like the light transmission through these was superior compared to the other two sets of binoculars. So I want you to keep that in mind. And it's all because of that prism system, that Abe Koenig prism system. But like I said, you give up the size, you're going to a bigger binocular. I mean, you can tell this one fits pretty compact in my hand, pretty easy to maneuver around, you know? And so the, you've got that to consider. Now, optical distortion. A lot of people look at that and they go, okay, you know, when I hold the binoculars up and I look through them and I look up at the edge of the binocular, I can see a little distortion around the edge. You know, well, you know, I would expect that. And here's why. Um, in the optical industry, what's gonna happen when you go to the eye doctor? When you go to the eye doctor, they're gonna sit down and they're gonna measure you to fit you with a set of glasses. They're gonna work for you. And one of the things they're gonna measure is your pupillary distance. And the reason they measure your pupillary distance is because they have to grind that, that glass or your, your lens rather, whether it's polycarbonate, whatever it is, they have to grind and polish that so that the optical center comes over your pupil on each side. That's why they want your pupillary distance and they get your distance on how the frame sits on your face and they try to center that the best they can. But that's the optical center. Because technically, when you're wearing the glasses, you should be looking straight ahead through the optical center of the glass. And that's the way you should use your binoculars too. You should you know, try to look through that optical center of the glass for best performance. Now I know sometimes you're set up and you're, maybe you've got it on a tripod and you just, you're just staring off at you know, something that's you know, 1,300 yards away. And uh, you know, yeah, you're gonna, you're gonna kind of scan around the whole picture and look and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, you may still see some optical distortion with just about any set of binoculars. And uh, I'm just saying, keep in mind that, you know, with the curvature of the lens, you're gonna have some distortion when they're trying to put the focus right near the center and you've got a lens this big, you're gonna see some distortion probably around the edge just a little bit. Now with these, I didn't really pick out much distortion. Um, but I hear people talk about it quite a bit and I have seen it in other things like scopes and some other things that I've used before and uh, it can be somewhat annoying. Uh, so just uh, take that with a grain of salt, but these were very clear and it seemed like they were clear all the way to the edge. Now uh, take that with a grain of salt. There's going to be some distortion no matter what. I just wasn't seeing it tonight. Uh, but like I said, because of physics, you're going to see you're possibly gonna see some distortion on any set of binoculars you pick up. So keep that in mind. Um, given that, like I said, I'm pretty happy with uh, where things shook out. Haven't had them in the woods or anything like that yet, uh, but you know we'll see what happens. Uh, been happy with these, but they don't really compare to the UHD. Uh, if you're looking to try to make a difference and, and you're even comparing the standard Vortex HD to the Vortex UHD, it's gonna be the same comparison that we did on these two here with the different prism systems. Um, now, I'm gonna say this though, if you're buying UHD to look at something, you know, let's say 500 yards and in, you're not gonna see much difference between your standard HD and your UHD. When you stretch it out there and you're spending long hours behind the glass, looking long distance, and you'll see the difference. You're gonna, you're gonna enjoy the difference too. And your eyes will thank you later for uh, not being quite as tired. But anyway, I wanted to bring that to you. I wanted to talk to you about the Razor UHD, the differences between the high def and the ultra high def and why that's there. It's the two different prism systems. I think you'll be happy with the UHD if you go that route. Um, like I said, the cons are just the overall size and the weight, you know, and if you can deal with the overall size and weight, it's got superior glass, superior prism system, amazing light transmission. You know, it's just uh, things that you need to look at too. Look at some other reviews too. Try to find somebody in your area. That's a lot of money to spend just to say, hey, I'm gonna buy these just because that guy on Six Mile Outdoors said so. 
Uh, no, I challenge you, go out, find somebody with some, look through them, try to spend some time behind them if you can, and look farther than just, you know, across the store or across the parking lot. And, uh, you know, really, really spend some time with it. But, you know, given that, um, you know, like I say, it's a, it's a set of binoculars you're gonna buy for a lifetime. And what I mean by that is you know the quality of the Vortex warranty. You know, so spend that money now, buy once, cry once, and get out there, get to enjoying the binoculars that are gonna be just probably the top of the mark for what you're gonna need for the rest of your life. Get those out there, use them. Don't worry about them because you know their warranty is, you break it, we'll send you a new one. So, I, you know, I hear everybody talk about that and I haven't found one person yet that says they haven't called up Vortex and said, I've got a problem here, I've, I've done this, I've done that, this is what happened, no questions. They replace them, they fix them, they do whatever needs to happen for that particular situation. They're a company that stands behind what they do and it's, it's evident in everything that uh, I've seen so far. So, hey, jump out there, take the, take the risk, but do your homework, look at other reviews, and more importantly, try to find somebody that has some, okay? And uh, hey, if you got any questions or anything, drop them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer those. And um, hey, if you like what I'm doing, uh, go ahead and hit that like, hit the share, do ring the bell, do all that stuff. And uh, you know, I hope to uh, hear from you guys soon. And uh, really thanks for, thank you guys for uh, tuning in and watching this review. And God bless everyone and good hunting.